Hey. Hi. You must be Mike. That's right. You, you sprayed this the last day or two? About three days ago I sprayed this. These are Roundup Ready sugar beets. I discovered I got a problem out here, and that is... These this, are not dying. Th this is a new weed for us. Um, what that is, is that's Roundup Ready canola. And Roundup Ready canola isn't growing anywhere in this region. In the springtime we have... Huge flocks of geese that land in these fields as they're coming out of Canada in the fall, and then, yeah. of course, in the spring, you know, they come back. But I think in the fall, when in they're the coming fall, from they've Canada, fed on the canola up there. They're eating canola up in passing Canada. Passing through them and then dropped here on the. Yep. There's nothing that kills this out of sugar beets, and so I, I called Monsanto and asked them what I could do about it. They told me uh, hand labor was the only way to get rid of it. One plant. Uh, can have hundreds of thousands of seeds on it, and uh, if that goes to seed, we're, then uh, we'll be dealing with it much sooner, and it'd be a much bigger problem. We just rely too heavily on Roundup, is what's happened, and everybody's been using it in every crop, and the weeds are really quickly adapting and, and becoming immune. So now we're growing soybeans that uh, instead of paying six or seven or eight dollars a bushel for seed um, we're paying uh, uh, in the fifty to sixty dollars a bushel for the seed it was getting down to the point where about fifty percent of our loads were being rejected because of contamination mm. and we couldn't buy seed that was pure without contamination the seed company sold us straight up this stuff's going to have some contamination in it yep. and uh, so and on top of that, um, the conventional seed no longer was cheap. The seed companies, because the Roundup Ready seed was five or six times as much money, they simply hiked the price on their conventional seed, and then when they sold you the seed, it came with a clause that even though it's conventional, it's not patented, you couldn't save and replant it. So we were back to paying the high price for the conventional seed. We couldn't sell it into the Japanese market for a premium. We were putting then more expensive conventional herbicides on it, it was a losing proposition. We didn't have any choice but to go back and start planting Roundup Ready crops. There was, there was no choice. What would your advice be to, to British and European farmers? To go down this route or to... to... I, I would not, just from the standpoint that the, the first few years it'll be cheap and economical. And uh, once everybody has switched to it, uh, you'll lose your choices. Um, uh, you'll no longer have a choice to raise convention, conventional products in the corn, um, uh, and, and, and you'll get yourself into a trap where you're paying royalty fees to companies that own traits and, and chemicals, and, and they'll continue to raise those, those fees every year. Even if you didn't, didn't buy uh, glyphosate tolerant, canola, somebody spilled some on the road or cross pollinated or did something and you'll end up with some in your field and, and, and uh, they'll own that and you won't be able to keep seeds back any longer. And run the risk of possibly going to court or yeah, oh, you, because you, you've stolen the trait yeah, and, and yeah, used not, it? Not yeah. possibly, you'll end up in court. <laughs> in North Dakota we had a, um, a whole coexistence um, panel and a coexistence um, trying to think of what one would call it <laughs> uh, a tr sort of a, a trial run at trying to understand that there could be coexistence it, it it was deemed not possible no matter how careful one might be in segregating every aspect of production from seed production and development through marketing of the commercial supply right. even if one could achieve that which I don't think is possible not economically anyway uh, the pollen is drift issue is the cross-pollination issue is is unsolved <music>